The Maroi Conservancy, like all conservancies, is uh, basically a cooperation between landowners. They're pooling all their land together into this great big hunting operation. So what you have is an enormous piece of land with lots and lots of animals and no interior fences. The concept that we lay down to all the landowners is sustainable utilization. 20 years ago when my father and the previous landowners, they started this idea that no one could get together. And when I started this idea four years ago, I thought it was going to take me another 20 years. And we're four years down the line and the concept is there and it's working. I got my Cape Buffalo the second morning of the hunt. Ken was with me, we got to share the experience. Now Ken's up to bat. We had seen on Gory's hunt um, um, buffalo from, from the elevated position on the copy. So I decided once again, let, let's go back up there. It was a beautiful day. Terry Bonar, our tracker, actually spotted some buffaloes off in the distance. Terry Bonar saw seven bulls moving from, from the eastern to the western side of which there were three, three good bulls in it. We sat there for about half an hour and decided, um, we sent another tracker and he found that they've, they've, they, their tracks have crossed the road. And I just got this hunch that they, they were going towards the water as we've had a lot of rain and there's still some water in the river. Well, we came out this morning looking for buffalo and I climbed up on uh, one of the copies here. Um, kind of open area in front of us. We'd heard there was some uh, buffalo moving, uh, would be hopefully right across in front of us here. And we waited a while, thought maybe they'd uh, settled in the bush a little bit. So one of the trackers went down and kind of worked his way through there. And um, it looked like they'd moved on. We're gonna climb down off of here. We're gonna head over. They think there's a watering hole that they're headed towards and we're gonna try and get over there and uh, probably kind of be set up right in that area and hopefully they'll walk in on us. We dropped down off the kopi, got into the bush and tried to cut the buffalo off. Um, we're cruising along through the bush and we drop into this sandy river bed, you know, a dry creek bed. And it was kind of almost surreal being down in there. We were surrounded by the bush, but we had pretty easy going, but we had no idea where the buffalo were. I mean, we were all looking around. We're trying to stay on the track. Actually, there was a couple times down that river bed. I'm kind of looking up at the banks, a lot of cover, and I'm going, I wonder who's stalking who here. Uh, but the buffalo, they kept zigzagging in and out of that creek bed. So we'd be on the track, they'd be zigging out, we'd stay and they'd zig back in. So we just kept trying to plow along, either get ahead of them or try to catch up to them. We ended up at a water hole and Ben's looking over the situation. We're not sure if we got there ahead of the buffaloes or if they're already gone, but Ben decided the best course at that point was just to sit down and maybe spend an hour or two there. I mean, we're at the water hole, the day is heating up. We're thinking this is where the buffalo are gonna wanna be. It's maybe one, two minutes later, we're standing there trying to decide what to do. We look up and there's a buffalo just walks into the clearing about 100 yards out. We're just dumbfounded by it. I think everybody just kind of stood around for about five seconds and then everybody just scrambled into position. Uh, ben slammed down the standing shooting sticks. Ken got on the sticks. Camera guys got ready and there we are. Ever been told to get a grip? Well, chances are it wasn't in reference to your shooting form, but a good grip is one of the most important components to accurate and consistent shooting. Think about it. Your grip is the only physical connection you have with your bow and, along with your stance, is the foundation of your shooting form, good or bad. Too many shooters put a kung fu grip on their bow, like it's going to fly out of their hand at the shot, and the result is loose and inconsistent groups. That's because gripping your bow handle too tightly or shifting position on the grip after you draw causes torque, which pulls the bow to one side or the other and destroys accuracy because the arrow doesn't come out of the bow consistently. Now there are a few things you can do to get a consistent and proper grip and eliminate torque. First, you wanna grip the bow handle right there, right in this Y between the thumb and the forefinger with the only contact being the web just like that. 
Okay, for this next tip, you're gonna need a prop. Magic marker, buy them anywhere. See that crease between your forefinger and your thumb? You wanna make a mark right there and another one on the center of your bow grip. Now when you come to full draw, if you've got those two lines lined up, you know that you're not torquing the bow from one side to the other. One last thing, handle grabbing is a natural reaction and an accuracy killer. Now you can see what happens if you grab the handle as the arrow leaves the string, you're gonna kick that arrow to the left and it's gonna destroy accuracy. What you want is a relaxed grip all the way through the shot. And you might wanna get one of these. A wrist sling will give you the confidence of knowing that your bow is not gonna jump out of your hand at the shot and you'll be able to relax your grip. The next time someone tells you to get a grip, tell them, hey, I've already got one and I'm hitting nothing but bullseyes.